No doubt, standing here with Buckshot, you might not remember, but a couple years ago, man, I saw you perform with Brand Nubian in the Armory in Philadelphia. This was like, actually like more like 10 years ago. And we shook hands on stage and I told you, I said, don't ever forget me. And you looked at me and smiled and was like, I won't never forget you, man. So I say that because you always had a positive energy about you. So first and foremost, I want to express my appreciation for all of the work that you put into hip hop and the inspiration that you gave me over the years. You know what I'm saying? So real quick, man, just tell us a little bit about how you got started in hip hop, man, and where you at now, where you see hip hop going. If you could change anything in hip hop, man, what would that, what, what might that be? Um, mm, that's well. Started as an intern for um, for uh, Soul MCA Records, and I started from there as an intern. Um, I used that knowledge to get me into the game and get get with a few people and got with a promoter and wound up getting a show. And the show got us a, uh, a introduction to Chuck Chill Out, who then brought us to a label, independent label, and then they liked us. We got signed, put out into the stage, <laughs> and from there we created a management company. Duck down the near label and um, and uh, put our group that you know from that point on. So into the stage was pretty much my entry into the game. How I I, I I was always doing my grind before I got actually in the mainstream as far as like putting out a record. But I, I always knew that making music was something that I wanted to do. So. Um, uh, what, but, 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 but would I change in it? I, I don't think I would change anything, man, because uh, for, for a lot, you know, you hear people say that they would. I, I, if I change anything, it would, it would, it, we wouldn't be doing this interview right now. You know, and think about that. Like, you know, it's called the butterfly effect. You know, the guy goes back in the time, steps on a butterfly, and next thing you know, the whole time sequence is messed up just from stepping on that one butterfly. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm sorry. This is Chuck. Okay. Yo, I'm in the back with Knife. We're in that area where Knife is at. I, I wouldn't change a thing, though. I wouldn't change a thing in hip hop. Um, uh, drop that car. I wouldn't. I wouldn't drop a. I mean, I wouldn't change a thing in hip hop because everything goes the way it's supposed to go. So. Now, a lot of people are unaware of, of your work with Tupac in relation to an album that was called One Nation. I heard Pac speak about. I only caught like a like little bit of material off of that. Whatever happened to that project, and is any of that material available? Um, the project got scattered around the place when when when, when um, that whole fall of death row happened because of Pac. So there isn't a name, uh, there isn't one place where you can actually go and get the album, but it is all around the place. It's scattered. You got to go on YouTube, you got to go on this, go on that site, but, and then it's because a lot of stuff we didn't get a chance to finish. So um, anything that we do finish will be in the name of Pop, and some of the stuff that we do have around is still done with Pop. So it never really was a finished project, um, but it was more of a personal relationship, more of a got a chance to experience something in you know in weeks that people get experience in years you know because of the rapidity the time and and the work and so it, it was um it was an incredible deal you know what i'm saying um being with tupac and living with him you know what i'm saying so hey, what's up man? <laughs> so living with tupac was just special for me personally and um and then you know like i said uh, you know I mean, a lot of people are not aware of a lot of the stuff that I did with different artists. Uh, I did a track with Biggie. I was on the um, Black Panther soundtrack with Biggie. You know, me, Biggie, Redman, um, Big Bone Thugs of Harmony, you know, a whole bunch of people. You know, we was on one of the one that on that soundtrack. That was one of the biggest tra soundtrack for hip hop at the time because it had all of us. I mean, every MC knew every MC on one track. What's the rhymes? So. One thing I remember about the whole boot camp clip and, and specifically the Black Moon album is the sound was just like no other. It was an exclusive sound unto itself. Can you talk to talk to us a little bit about that sound? What inspired it? What do you think the root of it was? It was it was like really dark but but enlightening at the same time. Enlightening. It was just a whole sound that to this day I haven't found the right words to describe the sound, man. Just talk a little bit about the sound that y'all came up with, man. The flow of the lyricism and just the, the music and the, the, the way that it just penetrated. Well, um, when it comes to the sound, first and foremost, that's that's beat minus, and you know, and and in, in its entirety, it's everybody bringing they got their vibe and their energy to the table. 
Um, B minus is very dark and muddy to a, to a degree, and I'm very melodic. So and and, and uh, then then we both as a unit have jazz orientation. So when you mix all of that in, you get that taste of Black Moon, or you get that feel of Black Moon, which is the reason why when you go outside of something that Black Moon did or something that I did with Black Moon, like I might have done something with even I Wonder, and you can see the similarity. You could tell that I like certain types of, I just like that hard stuff. You know, I like all types of stuff that is good, you know, quality. And sometimes you can't put a label on that. I could, I don't even want to call it boom, you know, boom bap anymore. I, because, you know, people, people get, people start to get, people start to get labels. We create the beginning of them and then they turn it into something different. So now boom bap, it ain't, it ain't even, that's not, it ain't saying like how it was before. So I kind of draw back and just say, look, good music is good music, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, you can't, the only way you're going to know good music is to put it on, man. No doubt. Very true. Very true. You just completed a project with KRS-One. What was that like working with, working on that project with Chris? Look, same thing, you know. Huh? No, it's so, <laughs> so good. Me and Chris, uh, Chris is my favorite MC of all, of all times. I got a lot of MCs. That's like up there as my favorite, but I guess he was like, I guess he's considered my favorite because of his versatility, his style of consciousness and flows and got a lot of stuff that make him just my personal, you know what I'm saying, favorite. So for me to do an album with him was, was ill, was special and I, I'm blessed, you know what I'm saying, to do, to be a part of that. That's a part of history, you know? Right. One last question. Was there, has there ever been anything as an artist that has caused you to feel uncomfortable as a hip-hop artist in this whole industry? As far as, um, as far as uh, an artist, what they've done in their career or what? Just generally speaking, whether it might have been a relationship, an experience, just a moment in time, a particular place and time you were in as a hip-hop artist, has there ever been a point where you might have just said to yourself, look, I don't even want to do this no more? No. No, there's never been a time for me personally. Um, um, I, 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 I concentrate all my energy on who and what I am. And I, like I said, I started off as an intern and then I always was an MC. So I combine who I am and put it into the business. That's who I am. I think a lot of people know me more for one or the other in some cases. And I, I do, I would like to be known for both the 50%, the 50% artistic and business, which is what I am. And... One, that's like my goal, you know, my goal is to put that out and really get the public to understand the true buckshot, who I am as a person, which is, you know, 50-50, which is a buck, you know what I'm saying, 50% business, 50% artist, you know, and, and, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I can't. I can't sit here and say that um, that I have any type of regrets or anything. So there's nothing that I would. There's only one thing that I would. That I, that I would. I don't like, rather, and it didn't turn me up for being an MC, but it's something that I don't like, which is a part of the industry. Um, most MCs, you know, they they tell you yeah, you know, and I respect the person that they tell you no. Most MCs are just individuals that you meet from different boroughs and places and times, and we don't know these people. And we all get together, we know each other through one joint thing of being an MC or music or whatever. Um, but but we don't really, nobody really really know each other. So we get to know each other through these conversations. And when we get to know each other, this person made it a be a type of be the type of person that you may not really vibe with or he may have point of view that you disagree with it don't get shown as a whole but one way it does get shown as far as who's real and who's not is most MCs will tell you they call you back and you never get a call back most MCs will tell you they fuck with you and don't really fuck with you you know what I'm saying so I'm the type of nigga that you know you you know I got all this stuff going on the label this that I, I, and you still call my phone and, and I'm I'm picking up and that's only because you won't have my number unless I fuck with you and now and I, I only fuck with you if you real and I'm, I don't if I don't have a reason to give you my number personally I'm gonna give you a number where it goes according to if you want to do business then I'll give you an email whatever 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 I'm not giving out my number but if I give you if, if, if MC a lot of MCs do that you know what I'm saying so that in turn reflects on how most of these people just are just 
focused on whatever they're focused on. I'll put it to you like that. I won't say they're not real. I won't say they're this. No, I'll just say they're focused on whatever they are. Okay. And for the most part, at the end of the day, everybody do you. Because to do something is better than doing nothing. And to be here is to be a blessing, period. There's a lot of people that's trying to get to where we got. Some people walk around with 30000 in their pocket. Like other people walk with $30, wishing that there's other people that got 30 cents. All the line in the chain, man. Mm -hmm. you know, that's it, you know. And I want people to recognize me as, you know, like I, like I said, as the buck, you know. Mm -hmm. So this, even this year, got a whole lot of stuff, you know. Um, still doing the same thing I'm always doing, which is being 10 steps ahead of where everybody else is at. You know, we started the internet dot com shit in 95. Mm -hmm. Now we on to something that I wouldn't even talk about right now because it's so... It's so there, and it will be put in effect, because one thing people can guarantee about us, whether you sell a little bit of minimum or a lot to your degree, when you get with Duck Down, we put out records. There hasn't been one artist ever that you said, damn, why this person ain't never put an album out, but they got with y'all. That ain't never happened. So one thing you can say is it will come out. Any project. I got a book coming out 20, November 23rd, The Manual. I told people about that book a long time ago. They probably forgot about it or thought I dropped the ball. It's coming out. I mean, I got a book, a knapsack that's coming out. And anything I do, I do it for a reason. And when I do it, it's going to come to the surface. Can you uh, let us know if we want to do business with you, how we can contact you, uh, and also speak about any future projects? You just spoke on the book, but any, any new music or anything that might be coming out as well? Um, besides, uh, we just got a, we got a project with Farrell coming out. Um, um, we got a project. Where it's, just, it's another artist that's about to announce that what label he's on October 19th. I would say it here, but he probably will get mad at me. But it's a good, big, big, a big project, a good street project. It's a project that fit perfectly with what Duck Down doing. So I think everybody will be ready for that. Um, peace. Um, and um, like I said, uh, Kids in the Hole, Smith and Wesson and Pete Rock, their album together, Monumental. It's gonna be real good too. So. Um, it's a lot of stuff in store, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff in store, and, um, you know, I'm just excited about this year, you know, especially because, like I said, I really plan on showing people what time it is. There's so much going down. I'm a hustler, a businessman. When I first started out, before I was an intern, I was selling incense and oils on tables with, with books, getting money. Right. So, I'm not a, I'm a and I, people know that about my past, and then... I'll be the first one to let you know you lucky I can't do that now. Later for being the type of person that's embarrassed or won't do it, you lucky I can't set up a table right outside of there. Right. And, and be and be and be hustling. It's all about the product at the end of the day, but it's still a hustle where I'm sitting there with money in my hand going, yo, come on, I got this. Who wants right. to show you I know you want these areas. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. That's me. That's that's originally who I am. Mm -hmm. So when I bring that to the music industry, you know. I'm, especially with this tour that's coming up, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be out there every day, on on the, after the shows, going hard on the merchandise, signing autographs, taking the pictures, but really just just using the hustlers method of really, yo, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it, and that, look, spend a dub, like instead of you gotta take that forty, go get a double, some dower. Spend a double on me and sit back for an hour and feel lovely. Like, mm -hmm. go to do, do rock with me, baby, because I'm, I'm here to rock with you. Right, right. You know, at the end of the day, that's what it is, man. Everybody's a hustler. What's a good way to keep up with you, man? Email, uh, my website? Email is real, you know, my email is buckshot at um, duckdown.com. So if anybody want to get in contact with me and um, they want to, you know, do any type of projects or stuff like that or any type of collaboration, um, you know, hit me up, you know what I'm saying, buckshot at duckdown.com. And like I said, 20% of something is better than 100% of nothing, man. People got to recognize, that even though that we are all independent, man, I got that hustle mentality first and foremost. That means that I didn't go out and sell earrings for $20 that I got for nothing. I would buy these earrings for $2, $5, $3, and sell them for 20 You got to put in something to get something, man. Y'all got to stop coming to the table with nothing, going, yo, it's on the love, it's on the strength. I don't have to be the person to do it for you or not do it for you, but if you doing it on a level and on a strength and that's what you'll get mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's no need to have anything else to say if you're good on that that's right you know what i'm saying right. yeah i appreciate your time man
Really?